What's good everyone, you're watching the third installment in this series of videos on creating a virtual Linux home lab. In this video, we'll clone our system image VM to build a user-friendly router and name server role on our network. Before we clone the system, make sure that your system image VM from last video is connected to LabNet. So let's see here, all of that looks great, so we'll just hit OK. We'll come back to these network settings in just a moment, but first we're going to right click on system image and hit clone. We're going to name our new clone NetServer. And we'll set the MAC address policy to generate a new address for all network adapters. We'll hit next and create a full clone and hit clone. Okay, with our new clone created, go to settings and network and check here that we still have our network lab net that we made before. But now we're going to add a second adapter, enable it, and attach it to the built-in NAT network so we can get online. So that should be good, so we can just hit OK and start our VM. Alright, now that our VM has started up, the very first thing we want to do is log in. And as you can see, our hostname is still system image, and we don't want that. So we're going to type in sudo hostname ctl hostname and name it NetServer. That way there will be no conflicts. So we'll just do that and get a new prompt by saying sudo su dash. Okay, now that we've set up our hostname, we can start setting up our router. Since setting up a Linux router isn't really part of the RHCSA or RHCE, which is sort of the focus of these videos, I've written an Ansible playbook to automate this part. However, at the end of the video, I will briefly explain how the playbook works if you're curious about what configurations I've set. So, we'll need a few packages to clone and run the playbook. So first run yum update, just to make sure that we're up to date. And next run yum install git ansible-core and rel-system-roles and then just say yes to that and we'll come back when it's done. Now that the installation has finished, you can clone my repository with git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash akifun that's a-a-k-y-f-u-n slash rel router ansible separated by dashes. So we'll just do that and it'll clone my repository and when that finishes, change into the directory. Now before we run the playbook, let's check out a couple of things. Notably, if we run IPA for address, we'll see that the first interface in our list is loopback, the second interface is our labnet interface, which does not have an IP address, and the third interface is our NAT network from VirtualBox, which is why we're still able to access the internet. Well, one of the things that this play will remediate is that it'll assign a static IP address to a router and then set a dynamic DHCP address to all of our other nodes that'll show up on our network in the future. So with that being said, we can also check out NMCLI con show and we'll see something similar. We have a working wired connection and we also have an inactive connection. So with all of that put together, now it's time to run the playbook with the command ansible-playbook and then dash i for inventory, and then type in inventory.ini. That's the name of the inventory file. And then we'll provide the name of the playbook. So that's rel-router.yml. And we'll just run that, and it'll gather some facts, do some configurations and package installs, and in a moment, it'll finish up. Now we're running this playbook against our local machine since doing things like network configuration over a remote connection with Ansible is prone to errors, just because you're getting disconnected from the network in the middle of it. So that's why we're running it locally, by the way. So it finished, and now we can just reboot our system to make sure the changes take effect. With the system back up, log in and we'll check out a couple of cool things. So if you run IPA for address, you'll see here that our, our LabNet interface has a static IP address of 10.0.0.1. So that's pretty cool. And if you run NMCLI con show, you'll see two network connections, an external one and an internal one. 
The external one is connected to the NAT adapter that VirtualBox provides, and the internal one is connected to our LabNet bridge. So that's pretty nifty, and if we run systemctl status DNS mask, we can tell that indeed DNS mask, our DHCP and DNS server, is running and working well. So that'll be all for setting up the router. You may stop watching here if you want, but for the remainder of the video, I'll briefly explain how the playbook sets up our VM if you're curious about the defaults I chose. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So over here on GitHub, here's a view of my repository. We'll take a look at relrouter.yml. Okay, so here at the top, I set some facts for the configuration files used by DNS Mask and Network Manager, which are providing the service for the setup. As you can see, the DHCP address range is pretty small. Uh, you can pump up those numbers if you want to, but I'm just going to leave them as is. Over here, I do a couple of different things. I make a few adjustments and do some checks to tell apart the internet connected interface, our VirtualBox NAT adapter, from the internal network interface. So that's LabNet. It's sort of hacky, and depending on how you look at it, um, it might be even a little messy too. But it works for our purposes, and this is my first playbook, so uh, I guess that's fine. Okay, down here, um, we clear out any old network connections in Network Manager, so we're just like really starting from scratch. And next, we install some configuration files using templates to fill in the variables. Next, we install DNS Mask and install the configuration file for DNS mask also using templates and start it. And this last part over here is to add the net server host name to the host file so that all of the other computers can see it in our lab network. And we also enable IPv4 forwarding in our kernel. Um, this final section here is just for setting up firewall D so as you can see I couldn't set the default zone to internal using the roles so what I did was I used a shell command to do that um, and this last part is just adding DNS and DHCP exceptions to the firewall and enabling masquerading which is basically network address translation on the internal zone so that's pretty much it um, if you take a look at my GitHub, you'll also see I made a similar thing to this playbook, except it's a script. Uh, it does pretty much the same thing, but I recommend using the Ansible version since it's a little more up-to-date and easier to kind of read. Anyways, uh, I hope that helps you understand how the router VM is getting set up. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.